Now, for anybody who has been paying attention, and of course nobody complains, so maybe nobody's paying attention, but you might have noticed that I missed the video the other day. Our countdown to Christmas is supposed to be one video of a simple project every single day from the end of November through Christmas Day. And Tuesday, I was a little under the weather, didn't come up to the shop, didn't get a video done. So we're one video short so far. So we just finished a video on making our two-tine and our three-tine marshmallow slash hot dog cookers. And I thought today would be a good day to make that up and do a second video, kind of a double feature day today. And we'll do a one-tine marshmallow or hot dog fork, more commonly called a meat skewer that you might use if you're making kebabs of some sort. I have ideas for a couple of different starting material sizes, one really simple when using the same 3 16 round rod. Then I'll try to do some that have a little bit more of a, a historical take based on some of the old ones that I've seen drawings of. My plan is to make three different versions of this, one very simple one out of the round bar. And I'm going to start with this one. I have 15 inches of bar. In the long run, I want it to be about 12 inches long. So this is just a starting point and hopefully we'll end up with something about 12 inches long. So that's about 38 centimeters of starting material, and ultimately I want to end up with about 30 centimeters in length. First thing I want to do with this round bar is put a nice tapered point on it, just like we did with our cooking forks. And like every other tapered point, it just starts off with a square taper. then an octagon, and then round it up. You guys let me know if you ever get tired of me uh, explaining that whole process every time. But I know every video is somebody's first video to watch, so somebody hasn't listened to me say that a hundred times already. So that's all we need to do to that end. I'm going to do the same thing to the other end, only a little short taper here. And this end is going to get bent into a ring. So this is just for a little decorative curl. And just put a little decorative curl on there. And then bend a ring either around the horn of the anvil or in a little jig like this if you've got one. And you just kind of clean that ring up and straighten it a little bit right here at the, the horn. That jig's actually one I use for S-hooks, so it's not really meant for bringing rings all the way around full circle, but it, it helps. That's really all you need there. But like so many things, you can mess with it till the cows come home if you want to. I like them fairly roundish, as opposed to too pear-shaped. Now I know my hammer hands in the way, I'm sorry. But now really, that's that's a skewer. That's it. It's all you need to do. We're done. Call this video good. Print it. But I promised you a couple other versions. Now my goal here was about 12 inches. Yeah boy I ended up with a lot more. I ended up with 13 and a half. So I could have could have cut this shorter but that's okay that's going to work just fine. So that is as super simple a skewer as we could possibly make. You can put your meat and your vegetables on there, put them on the barbecue, 
piece of cake, no problem at all. But if you look at historical skewers, they tend to be out of flat stock, presumably so the meat doesn't twist on them. And I don't have any thin, narrow flat stock. I'm thinking something like eighth by quarter, eighth by three eighths, something like that is probably more exact. I don't think I've ever seen exact dimensions for the historical ones. They also tend to be a long, continuous taper as opposed to a parallel with a short taper on the end or a point. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of versions of that. I've never made one like this before. I'm going to start one with a piece of eighth by half, which I do have, so we'll just have to narrow that out. And I'm going to do another one out of quarter inch round bar that I'm going to flatten into that flat bar. So let's start with the quarter inch round bar. Got to start somewhere. Now the other thing that you frequently see with the historical ones, these were apparently quite common in kitchens. People actually cooked this way in the kitchen fireplace quite regularly. So there was often a little hanger that went with these. And while I can see that in my head, I don't see it in my head well enough to make one today. So tonight I will take a look in some of the books that I have that have historical cooking implements in them and see if I can find some good images of some of these skewer hangers. And then we'll make that in a future video. So instead of flattening this and then tapering it, I'm going to taper it and then flatten it or at least taper the very point. We'll just keep going till we get something that looks about right. Be careful on that end, even in mild steel it'll split and lead you to believe you might have wrought iron, even though it isn't. finish that point up so it no longer concerns me. This is a little bit thicker than eighth inch right now. But remember what you're cooking on it could care less. This is just a just to hold meat while you cook it. Working it down into a black heat like this helps knock all the scale off so you don't have to wire brush so much. It leaves a smoother finish, gets all the pits out. And for cooking utensils, that can be pretty important. Of course, you can file these when you're done if you need to, but this is a really good place to work on getting a smooth finish right from the hammer. Try to eliminate all the little dips and divots from hammer marks. Even though sometimes we try to accentuate those in our modern work, it's good practice to know how not to leave hammer marks. That's really kind of what we're going for. I said I wanted to go for somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 inches. So I need to draw out just a little bit more of this. But so I can quit worrying about that 
far end that is essentially finished. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and turn it around and just get the end I want to work on hot. Just kind of refine that and get this as smooth as we want it. With any luck, I never have to come back to this section again. Now even these have a little ring on them, but they're usually a very small ring. And I want to start forming this with some half-face blows to offset the stock for the ring. It gives me a nice shoulder. We just kind of go back and forth to draw this out into a nice tail. It's only about 30 degrees in the shop today, so even though I've been doing some work and the anvil has warmed up, things still cool down quick, especially this little stock. I just want to knock the corners off gently just to make that smooth. And this one I'm not going to put a curly cue in because I don't think all the old ones had it. I'm going to spread that corner out just a little bit, make the top a little wider. And I'm going to back bend that. This thin stuff gets awfully floppy. And we'll form it into a nice little ring. Kind of tuck that sharp corner in there. Let's take one last little very low heat. You probably can't even tell it's hot. Just make sure it's straight. Take out any lumps, bumps, or kinks. That's pretty much that version of a skewer. I kind of like it. Perhaps this got a little bit too thin. I could have left it thicker. Well, that one ended up at 12 inches, which is exactly what I was aiming for. And I really liked the way that one came out. But we were going to go for three different versions. So this third version, I had originally thought I would draw out just like I did the other one. But we've seen lots of drawing out. Let's do something a little bit different. So I think I'm going to start with the ring end. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to chisel cut the rest of it out into a taper. And that'll leave me a long taper on the other side that I could make a second one out of if I wanted to. This one will be a little easier to manage because I'm leaving it on a longer bar. And since it's taller material, I'm going to go back and forth a little more to keep from collapsing it. I'm also going to leave this one a little bit thicker because on that other one I thought the ring looked a little bit thin.
So I think I'm going to leave the ring about like that for this one. Just chamfer the edges a little bit because I can. And then we'll roll it up. Just like the other one, we'll start by bending it backwards. And you can actually get kind of a square corner doing things this way if you really want to. I don't think for this it matters. It's a lot easier on the longer bar, especially since I don't have any tongs perfectly suited for some of this really thin stock. It's not my stock in trade, so to speak. Sorry, that was bad. So that's all I'm going to do for the ring there. Now let's split this out. I'm going to start this at a lower heat and I'm going to start this way, that, that angle, and since I want it about 12 inches and there'll be a little bit of hammer work involved, I'll come down into there. And this would be better drawn with a lot of things other than a soapstone, but that seems to work. I just want to create a line I'll be able to find again. As is often the case with things like this, I would do this under the treadle hammer most times. There's just more space to work and I don't have to worry about the hold fast. But this does work. And I suppose you could do this on a bandsaw if you really wanted to, but that's not very blacksmithy, is it? I can see my mark, but chisel's not finding it. I think before we get too serious with this, I'm going to sharpen this chisel. And really, since there's no risk of cutting all the way through this cold, or very little risk, I'm going to get rid of that cutting plate. Okay, that gives me a line I can follow. And you really could chisel this cold if you wanted to. If it cools off real fast, it might be less hassle. But I think at this rate about three heats and we should have it.
This thin stuff heats up really quick, so it's not really a big deal to keep getting it hot. Now one disadvantage to chisel cutting is this is going to leave a real ragged cut. Yeah, look at that, I think we're through. So I'm going to do a little hot rasping. Now we've watched hot rasping a lot. I think it's a real good technique. The only problem with this piece is it's so thin it's hard to get it locked in the vise and still leave enough up here to rasp. But again, if you're new to the channel, just an old wore out farrier's rasp. This is, was worn out when I got it. I've been using it for 10, 15, 20 years. You file in both directions on hot iron. It works just fine. But you could always let it cool and file it cold if you don't like hot rasping or don't have a, an old farrier's rasp. Or you could let it cool and do this. But hot rasping really doesn't take that much longer, and it's cheaper than buying flap discs. So of course that's crooked and lumpy and bumpy, but pretty easy to fix. All in all, I think this might be the winner of a technique here. It's this nice flat paper. And I think chiseling took less time than drawing the taper out by hand would have. Because this is pretty much done. Just a matter of trying to straighten it out. And then like the other projects, these all get a food safe finish. I tend to use pure beeswax, but you can use a vegetable oil if you want to. There we have three different approaches to making a meat skewer. The thin round stock is certainly the easiest way to go, but the meat also tends to slide around on there. So so if you're rotating it on the fire to keep everything cooking evenly and one piece always wants to go heavy side down, this may not always work as well as you'd like. The flat ones solve that problem. The flat ones also have just a little bit more grace and a little bit more style. I kind of like them better. I think overall the one that we chiseled out was probably the winner in my eyes. I think chiseling that went faster even though I had to hot rasp it than drawing out the other one did. But I like the one that we drew out as well. Both of them were good looking meat skewers. I'd be happy to use either one on my barbecue. So Jared Russell, thank you for the idea of making meat skewers. That was a fun little project. And that should bring us back up to one video a day, even though you got two today and didn't get one the other day. Hopefully I made it up for you. Of course, the original version of a meat skewer was nothing but a whittled stick with a point on it, and it was not a permanent item. You couldn't use the same one over and over again. But the cavemen were proud of it, and they called that a wonk, because it only had one point. 
In our previous video, we made a hot dog cooker with two points, so that would be a toque. And we also made one with three points, so of course that would be a threek. And one of these days we'll come up to the modern standard and make an actual fork. Anyways, enough silliness aside, I hope you enjoyed the video and can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Take some time, watch a few of the other videos, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something. There's still time to get some stuff done for Christmas, but do so safely, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. As always, if you would like to support the Black Bear Forge YouTube channel financially, there are links below in the description of the video for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are just donations. The content is free and will remain free. There is certainly no obligation to donate.